Hey folks, recently I've been thinking about hucking. I've had a video in the chamber for a while about advice I have on how to throw better hucks. I also think some of the common advice can be pretty irrelevant or sometimes even counterproductive. So to test my thoughts about hucking, I collected some data. On Patreon, you can watch this video with a clip of every huck thrown at US Nationals in 2024 in the men's, mixed and women's divisions, semi-finals and the finals. That's 163 separate hucks across 9 games. As well as the video of all of those hucks, I've linked a spreadsheet of all of the data I collected about these hucks so that you can do your own analysis and come to your own conclusions. You can check that out by clicking the link in the description and becoming a patron. Probably the most classic piece of advice on hucking is to not throw same third hucks. There's some debate about what exactly this means, but my interpretation is a same third huck occurs when the thrower, the origin of the cut, and the destination of the throw are all in the same throw of the field. 44% of hucks thrown in these games were same third hucks, and in fact those hucks were more successful than different third hucks. The baseline success rate for hucks was 55%, same third hucks hit 57% of the time, whereas different third hucks were down at 52%. I've been talking to Portland Rhino Slam player Joe Marmestein, who's a big fan of the same third huck, and that doesn't surprise me given that Rhino hit on 9 of their 10 attempted same third hucks in the semi-finals and finals of Nationals. He's just released this great video on the death of the inside out throw, which I recommend you should check out. I also tested this same third metric variable in my logistic regression model, and it was not a useful predictor of huck completion outcome at all. So overall, I think coaches should retire this same third huck idiom. It will be interesting to see more data on lower levels of play, where the potentially lower margin for error would be more painful to completion rates, that it's clear that at the top level, players aren't really shying away from same third hucks and are completing them at the same rate or better than other hucks. Another piece of advice I've heard a lot is that hucks should be thrown out in front of the cutter. I've always been skeptical that the receiver is really able to catch up to a huck. I define the out in front variable as a huck that overtakes the receiver by at least two meters, so out of their reach on the vertical plane. You might be surprised to hear that only 18 out of these 163 hucks met this criteria, and of those, only three were completed. Two of these were from the impressive Paul Arters, hitting his favourite target Nate Goff, and there was a great shot from Henry Ng to Rafi Hayes from within his own end zone. Even these hucks are only barely more than 3 metres ahead of their receiver on the vertical plane. I'm not saying that's impossible, Quinn Snyder's layout at the World Games or this beautiful huck from Michael Ng from his Callahan video come to mind as true, clear examples where the disc really does get a long way out in front of the receiver. My model shows that a huck being thrown out two meters or more ahead of the receiver was a negative predictor of the huck's likelihood of being completed. In other words, if you know the huck is going to go more than two meters out in front, it's probably not a good sign. What I'm not necessarily saying here is that throwers should take a bit of power out of their hucks, because I'm sure there are plenty of underthrown hucks here that were gobbled up by defenders that I haven't directly accounted for. But the point I am making is that the idea that the model huck is thrown way out in front of the receiver for the receiver to catch up to is just not reality. Most great hucks are thrown hard, catch up with the receiver, and then allow the receiver a nice runway to attack the disc laterally and high point the disc. Can't get it in Rafi skies for the score! Now if you do underthrow the disc, then it's likely you might run into poachers, and I wanted to investigate how much they affected the probability a huck would be completed. Reminder that the baseline completion rate was 55%. 44 out of the 163 hucks were affected by poach pressure. Hucks with poach pressure were completed 45% of the time, whereas hucks without poach pressure were successful 59% of the time. In my model, that was right on the edge of being considered a meaningful predictor. Which is a little surprising, but I did expect the difference in those probabilities to be slightly larger. Specifically, as much as 45% of poach affected hucks being successful beats a fair three-way fight. But I think it's fairly certain to suggest that players follow traditional wisdom and avoid throwing hucks that risk being poached onto. If you want to learn more about how to do this, then I'd recommend you watch our video of Harper Garvey, where he breaks down his decision making and throwing his world-class hucks. Pony's making it look easy. Offer 
I was theorizing that the lateral position was an underrated predictor of huck outcome. By that, I mean, does the attacker have the inside position to the disc the moment it's released? For your standard open side huck, the defender is likely to have the inside position at the point of release, as they're probably trying to be positioned on the open side. But I was still surprised how rare it was that the attacker actually had the initial inside position. It was only 30% of the time. In the end, the attacker having the inside position was slightly detrimental to the chance of the huck being completed at US Nats last year, though it was not a significant predictor in the model at all. Suflo has the score. What about the idea of power position? I like a power position as much as the next guy, but I was worried that the timing cube might help elite defenders know when to pursue a deep cut. But it seems that having a power position, which is basically just carrying force momentum into the huck, boosted huck completion rates up to 61%. Not enough to be a significant predictor in the model, but not evidence to dismiss this learned wisdom either. What about training hucks? Well, one thing I found out is that I should probably be training my flick huck more than my backhand, because at the elite level, 60% of hucks were flicks. I also think there's a reason to be training a broader range of hucks. In almost all of the hucking duels I've ever done, I've thrown open side hucks to a receiver starting their cut on the break side, which is absolutely the default type of huck, but it was only barely over 50% of all the hucks thrown at US Nationals. 23% of hucks were an open side huck thrown to a receiver on the open side already, characterized by the receiver having to switch the shoulder they are tracking the disc with, making the catch slightly more challenging. Just 7% of hucks were inside breaks, and 16% of hucks were around break hucks, often thrown with momentum. The stats show that taking on these alternative huck types did decrease players' completion rates even by the elite players. Keep an eye out for training drills to train inside, around break, and over the shoulder hucks coming soon. Thanks for watching, and I'll leave you with the least likely to be complete huck from Nationals, and the most likely to be complete huck from Nationals. Sending Thompson. Not this time. They need to hold. Mac Heck looking long for Anton Orm against Joshua Stevenstein, and it's Orm elevating, reading it beautifully. And the quick dish to Higgins for a revolver score.